Hello, how is everyone tonight? So I made the decision that uh, I am not going to have music today because we're going to do some standard tutorials. Um, it's to be just a little different today. We're obviously not doing a block today. We are doing uh, the block starting next week. It's supposed to be the second and the third Thursdays of the month. We did the first and second last month just because of weird timing for things because um, I was supposed to be in Houston but I ended up not being in Houston so uh, today I was thinking about you know what I really need to get some standard tutorials done um, the biggest tutorial I have to film is the one I'm getting asked questions a lot and that is what do I need in order to start quilting so that's going to be the first video is where I'm going to do a tutorial tonight on, um, oh, thank you, Sharon. Happy Thursday. How are you? Um, so I figure, you know what, instead of just doing a standard filming it on the weekends, like I normally do, well, why don't I just set it up here? Well, I'll record anyways. Um, I'll hit the record button, I'll do the, the intro, I'll do all the things, and then I'll download it and, and edit it. Um, and then, yeah, and then I can have you guys. And then that way, if you have any questions, if I need to talk about stuff more, uh, if I forget something, well then you can have a say in it. Which is why I like doing the YouTube lives anyways, right? Uh, yeah. So, oh, Olivia, you can say hi. Say hi, Olivia. So, and, and of course, if you haven't yet met Olivia, Olivia is our current foster for the Texas Chihuahua Rescue. I know, baby. She is not available for adoption yet. I am almost positive the moment she is available, she's going to go right away. Because look at this baby. Is she not the most cuddly, amazing baby? Hello, Killia. How are you? Yes, uh, yeah, I saw that. I saw it went live because uh, like, a bunch of my friends were freaking out that it was live already, and I was like, "Oh, oh, okay." I actually I don't play Animal Crossing, so hi. I know you good girl. She's my good baby. She's she's my good baby. She's my good baby. Yeah, she is nice and cozy. She's very happy right now. So I uh, I did a presentation last night to a bunch of the pre-approved adopters for the Texas Chihuahua Rescue. And she was in my lap, and she may have fallen asleep in my lap as I'm talking to people and doing things. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go put you down over there now, okay? She goes, oh, Mom, come on. Can I just, can I just get some, I know, I know. All right, I'm going to go put you down, okay? I'm going to go put you down over there. Yes. I, I, I know, yes. I, you could go for kisses? No, you're not in a kissy mood. Okay. You're a good girl. All right, we're going to go over there. So, uh, before I get started, um, this is what I was thinking of going over in, wrong camera, going over in the video. So, I've got a cutting mat. So, I will talk about, you know, cutting mats, just get, getting any cutting mat to get started, to, you know, get, to get started, really. Um, and do's and don'ts of cutting mats, you know, the, uh, the thin ones versus the thick ones. Um, a good pair of scissors. Oh, seam ripper. Seam, we gotta have a good seam ripper. Um, some decent thread. Some, uh, the quarter inch piecing foot with the guide, because it's super inexpensive. I think it's a great thing to pick up. Uh, pins and clips. So I'll do a pins or clips. Of course, rotary cutter and straight edge. Is there anything else that we can think of? So, some, oh, good some good needles some good needles that's some microtex jersey don't i have some good a good package of, oh there we go there's top stitch needle so yes so some good needles um see this is what i've been doing all day just like looking around going what can i not do without if i need to start quilting because that's the biggest thing, right? Yeah, I did say seam ripper. Yeah, so the seam ripper. I forgot to put the seam ripper over here. So, because I, I need my seam ripper. Oops. You need a seam ripper if you're gonna be quilting because you're gonna make mistakes. That happens, right? 
So I think, I think, I, oh, and an iron, of course. I'll talk about irons and I'll talk about the kind of sewing machine that you need. Um, really for piecing almost any sewing machine that can do a good, um, uh, a good tension is fine. It doesn't, you know, cost doesn't make a difference. It's only the higher priced ones you have to worry about if you're going to be doing the quilting yourself. Um, and then you've got to think about, you know, the thicknesses and things like that. So I'll talk about that. Uh, I think... I think that's it. I think that's good. Oh, 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 oh man, I'm tired. I'm just like looking around going, when I quilt, do I use anything else? I know it's everything. No, Kilius, you don't need one for quilting. You absolutely do not need a fabric pen to get started with quilting. For sewing, maybe. Maybe for um, for sewing clothing um, and for other things, but not for quilting. You don't have to worry about fabric pens. I, I never, ever, ever use them unless you get really into quilting. Although that's a good point for the advanced. So if I get to the advanced video, which I probably will, I'll, t I'll talk about marking utensils. Where is my... Yes. I'll talk about marking utensils because I don't use pens. I use pencils for my marking utensils. Um, but the, yeah, that's a, that's a good point for the advanced one. Okay. And then I've got this. That's my Clover poker turner. Uh, I think that's it. Anything else I can think of, or you guys can think of that's at that's, it, if you want to start quilting that you need to make sure you have before you quilt. That's what I'm trying to think of now. Hmm. I'll do the advanced stuff after this one. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Okay. You know what? I can just get started. And then if we think of something else, I'll add it to the list. All right. Let's do this. Did I? Really? Really? <sighs> oh, you know what I did? Mm, I think I did this. Okay, I think I know what I did. All right, hold on. Let me. Let me. Sewing machine. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I said sewing machine. I said sewing machine. You know what? That's a good technique that we can talk about, Kilioth. Whenever we do the advanced stuff, for when we talk about the, the, the marking stuff. All right. So, let's do YouTube filming. I think it did this because I think... Uh, I think it's the angle of the cord. Oh, maybe not. Oh, and of course I moved it. Well, maybe not. I had it working. I don't know what the problem was. <sighs> Man. What do you mean it's in use by another application? You know what? I think it's something in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, where because we're in the twilight zone. Yeah, yeah. All right. You know what? I think. Okay. That's why, because it's that one there. <sighs> Delete. Yeah, and that is the cam link four. So let's delete this, remove it. Yes, that's what I did. So it's with OBS, whenever you are using multiple cameras and different things, you can only have it put up and called one thing at one time, which is, yeah. Okay, so. Okay. 
Okay. But it's the cam link. It's not the... Hmm... Why are you not- oh my god, I seriously had you all set up ahead of time. <sighs> Silly computer. Alright, let's see, we're going through here, and there. Alright, let's take you off, and put you on. All of the things we have to do, right? Okay, so video filming. Yay! There it is. And of course, I tilted it wrong. I moved the actual camera, even though I had it perfect. All right, let me fix it. Okay. So it's got to go that way. And then up. Because we don't want it to show the actual mat. That's fine there. Perfect. And yes, yes, this is exactly what I go through every single time I do my tutorials. It's... <laughs> right, Sierra. Yes, that's funny. Yeah, it'll show up eventually because it's daylight savings time, right? Yeah. Technically, it doesn't... Daylight saving... Oh, actually, yeah, you're right. It, daylight savings... Because it is, right now is, I, I can never tell, are we in save, late daylight savings or do we start it this weekend? Like what is day, I don't, that's why I don't use EST or EDT. I just do ET for the uh, Eastern time zone. Okay. All right, let's do my intro. Ready? Oh, I gotta, I gotta hit record. Start recording. All right, now I got my recording going. All right, and the um, sound is good, right? Sound, there's no crackling, there's no popping. Sound is nice. Quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And then we hit stop recording. And just testing the sound just to make sure that I am good. Thank you, Sharon. I appreciate that. Let's see. Videos, videos. This PC, videos. And... Right, and the um, sound is good, right? Yep. Nope. It's perfect. Sound sounds good. Get it? Sound sounds good. All right. Start recording. All right. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Tony. And today we're going to talk about the things that you need to get started with quilting. Uh, that is the question I'm getting asked the most right now is, well, I'm interested in quilting and I want to get started. So what do I have to go out and pick up so that I can quilt? Well, that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to go through each of the things that I believe that you need in order to get started quilting. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about them and then I'm going to put some links to them down below. So if you just want to take some look at it on Amazon, you, you definitely can, but you can pick these up anywhere you want. And I highly suggest your local quilt store. So let's get started. What's the LOL for? What's the LOL for? All right. Number one, I'm thinking number one, we're, we, let's talk about the sewing machines first. Sewing machines first are the number one. That way I know when I'm doing my editing, that's a, it's a new scene thing. So I can just hit the, uh, the start, stop, start, stop. It doesn't take me long to film these, but it takes me forever to edit them. Apparently I talk a lot. Uh, no, right, Sierra, that is only for, um, for the actual, um, uh, for when you actually, uh, sandwich, when you sandwich your quilt sandwiches. And I've actually already have a video all about batting, um, talking about the different kinds of batting and everything else. This is just getting started. So someone's going to make a quilt top. 
So, and at the very end, I'll say, you know, this is this is just for for making quilt. Well, I'll, I'll do it now with the sewing machine. You know, making just making quilt tops. If you want to actually do the quilting, uh, then you need to look at better machines in order to do it. But I don't suggest investing that unless you you like quilting. Most of the time, people make a few tops before they uh, they actually quilt them. So and do that. So. All right. <sighs> All right, brother. Yes, he has 6,000. That's what I got. First up is the sewing machine. Uh, you can do some hand sewing, hand quilting, but if you're interested in machine quilting, the first thing you really need to think about is a sewing machine. Uh, if your machine can have a nice uh, uh, tension, tension, that's the word. If your machine can have a nice tension, uh, and you can sew a straight-ish line on it, it's fine. Whatever you have now, you can definitely use it for quilting. Now, remember, this is only for making quilt tops. Um, everything I'm going to go through here is just for making those tops. If you want to sandwich and finish off your quilts, you do need a much better machine, and I suggest that you go down to your local quilt store, take a look at what they have, and let them know that you're interested in quilting, and they can hook you up with something nice. But for making the actual quilt tops, really almost any machine, as long as you have a good tension and it can sew a straightish line, you're perfectly fine. Um, now, if you do have to go out and buy a machine, let's say if you don't, if you've never sewn before, if you're looking for a, a decent machine, um, I wouldn't get those low dollar machines. Um, I'd invest at least a little over $100 to make sure that your machine could actually sew and have a nice tension. Um, the machine that I use when I travel that's lightweight, easy to use, easy to figure out is the CS6000i from Brother. It's an inexpensive machine. It's on the lower end of the scale. Uh, and it's something that I like. I'll put a couple options of different lower priced machines that would definitely be fine for beginning sewers and beginning quilters down in the comments so you can take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. So we are thinking about the tops, right? Yes, I've got, I've got a, um, I've got a standard, I've got a ruler back here. Thank you. See, and this is why I do this live, right? This is why I've started to do this live so that if you guys have suggestions, you can put that in there. Definitely agree with you. Definitely want to talk about, and I'll talk about straight edges and stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'll keep on the sewing machine. So I'll do the quarter inch piecing foot with guide, the needles and the thread next. So I'll do, I'll do, the, so since we started with the sewing machine, I'll go to those. You know what, Sharon? That's a great idea. That's a fantastic idea. Does, um, does anyone want to volunteer to see if there's a good basic beginner quilt? You know what? No, not necessarily a pattern. I can talk about, um, churn packs. I can talk about charm packs. If they want something easy just to practice sewing things together and making a top, a charm pack is a great place to start. So I'll do that instead of a pattern. Um, because I, I, I have on my list of um, videos to make is how to read a quilt pattern. So so I can, I can do that. So hi, Erin. All right. Uh, I did say hi already, didn't I? All right, number two. Number two. Let's do, let's do the... Make sure the dog's nails stop hitting the ground. Along with your sewing machine, something you don't necessarily really, really need, but if you're interested in quilting, I suggest you pick up whenever you first get started, is a quarter inch piecing foot with guide. This thing is amazing and I love it. It's inexpensive. I've got a link down below. It's, it's not that much money. It's super, super inexpensive. Um, but what it does is you're a lot, you can sew a, a quarter inch seam every single time just by making sure your fabric is touching this piece of metal. So I've got a video talking about how to, um, uh, how to sew strips together. So I've, I'll put that link down below and it teaches you exactly how to use this. Um, I also have a video on how to sew a straight line. So I'll make sure I link that below as well. Uh, but this, I definitely recommend this foot and I've got the link below so you can take a look at it for quilting because it's almost all quarter inch seams and this is a nice cheater. 
Awesome. Yeah, see, but fat quarters, you'd have to be, yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah, that's a good idea, Aaron, for fat quarters. So I'll talk about if you want to practice with um, your rotary cutter straight edge, grab a, a, a fat quarter pack and you can just play around with cutting it and sewing things together. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. I like that. All right, so I'll put a fat, I'll put a fat quarter stack. Um, that's a big fat quarter stack. I don't have a little one here, do I? Oops, I didn't hit the mic, did I? Hopefully I didn't hit the mic. All right, so I'll grab a fat quarter stack and I'll grab the um, the charm pack in order to do that. Hey, Scott, there are buttons to press. You can now announce, by the way, you can announce how many months you've been a member now. That is a brand new thing with YouTube. Uh, so thank you, Scott, for being a member of my YouTube channel for 10 months. By the way, it's been 10 months since I've been doing YouTube lives. Thank you. Scott likes to push those buttons, <laughs> as we know. All right, so we did this one. Next up is, I'll do the, the needles. <sighs> Wait, do I, I do have a video all about needles, don't I? Let's see, YouTube, uh, Quiltoni. And Quiltoni, search needles. I think I've got a, yeah, what needle do I use? Yes, okay, so I've already got a video on what needle do I use. So I will make sure I uh, reference that then. Okay. This is number three, right? One, two, yeah, three. Three, I got number three. The third thing you need is needles. Don't. I highly suggest do not use the needles that come with your sewing machine. Uh, I really, really suggest going out and picking up a good pair of needles. Uh, so I like to use the Schmetz Chrome needles. Those are my favorites. I do have a video that'll teach you all about needles, which needle do you use for which project. Uh, and I'll make sure I link that down below. So if you're not sure what needle to pick up, take a look at that video and you could definitely uh, get the right needle for the job. See, that one's easy. Next up is thread. I don't think I've got a video already on thread. Oops. Ooh, ooh, come on. Thread. Why is my thread breaking? No. I do, I reference the, the quality of thread in um, in my needle video, but yeah, but so I'll talk about that. Exactly. Yeah. They don't, they don't last very long, Scott. You're absolutely correct on that one. So for those of you that are just popping in now, uh, this is a, the tutorial video that I'm making on the, uh, what do you need to get started quilting? Um, I know Scott was one of the, uh, it, reached out to me and said, hey, I want to get started quilting. What do I need? I had to go through the whole thing with him and then I had to go through other people. Well, I keep getting this question. So I'm like, well, let's make a video. And if we get through this video, then I'll do the, and so you decided you liked quilting? What gadgets and gizmos will make your life easier? That'll be a second video we do today. Hey, Kelia, thank you so much for becoming a member of my community and supporting my channel. I love and appreciate you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, you get access to a members only area. Feel free to post in there, talk about things. It's kind of dead, kind of like quiet right now. Um, yeah, we're testing things today. Today's testing things day. Um, so thank you, thank you. And also if I'm able to get videos out early, um, you will get access to them before anyone else so you can see them. Aaron. Thank you so much for 10 months. I appreciate you. Miss Elvain, thank you for 11 months. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. You like how Miss Elvain is, was the very first one to become a member because she had to test it before we even went live uh, to do the live stuff. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing, right? Yeah, Miss Elvain was the absolute first. So of course she is, she is, she is there. She is there. Yeah, so Kilia, you also get all the badge, just like you do at Twitch, um, and you get emotes. So you have all of the really cool emotes that we like to, you know, to throw on out there that you can throw. And it's not just on the lives. Those emotes you can use on any videos as well. So if you do comment on any of my videos or any place else on YouTube, you can use those emotes for there. So yeah, I'm excited. All right. 
thread. This is number four. Okay. That's the only thing I, I care about if you guys help me about too is the counting what number we're on. The fourth thing you need to think about whenever you're starting quilting for the first time is thread. Uh, there's a lot of really great thread out there. Um, you've got uh, Signature, you've got uh, Aurifil, you've got a ton of great thread brands. But if you're getting started and you're just learning how to quilt, I don't suggest that you put a lot of money into thread, but you do need good thread. Um, Guterman is a fantastic thread that I absolutely love and adore. I still use it for my top piecing for all of my quilts. Even the ones I put up in quilt shows, I use Guterman for all my top piecing. It's great. It's fine. And it's inexpensive, especially if you get it from a big box store using coupons. So take a look at the Guterman thread for standard uh, quilting piecing. You want the tan one that looks like this. It is a 50 weight. It is this color. Uh, no matter how big it is, that's the color. It's cotton thread for your machine. So you can also use the polyester, um, but I just tend to use the cotton because a lot of the fabrics I use are 100% cotton. But don't let that stop you. You can use any kind of thread in any project. So you can use your, uh, your polyester thread. Just make sure you've got the right needle for it. Remember, it's the needle that matters if you refer back to that needle uh, video that I made. Okay, there we go. Hey, Scott. Well, yes, that's it. That's it too. Yeah, winning a giveaway that I've got from sponsors is a way to get some thread as well. Because Scott's won quite a few times. Thank you for that $3 tip. Uh, th Scott, are you trying to cause chaos? I'm trying to record a video here and you're just pushing all the buttons and all the things. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for that tip. I appreciate it. It is. It is probably within a few days. So Scott's probably next Thursday will pop it for 11 months. <laughs> yeah, and one way of getting thread is, is winning the uh, winning all of the, the charity giveaway stuff. Yeah. all the, I know, Sharon, right? All the chaos, and you're getting ready to head home from work. All right, so we've got all of that stuff done. What do you think? Scissors? Yeah, I'm going to talk scissors. I'm going to do scissors next. Chaos is always good. Oh, oh, practice the re-editing. Yeah, yeah, I see. I see. I see how that is. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm recording this, and when I get to the next video, then I'll stop this, and I'll record the next one, and yeah. That way I don't have to download the video from YouTube. So, yes, all of the recording. Which, did anyone watch my video that I, I put out this week? The re-editing of the um, uh, retro gaming quilt along that I did two years ago? That was only two years ago, guys. Like, I'm shocked. It was just two years ago. So, if you watched that video this week, it was originally four and a half hours of stuff that I edited down to 30 minutes. It took me about eight or nine hours to edit that because I talk a lot. Apparently, I'm a talker. So it's gotten, it, it was really, I've gotten better with my, with YouTube so that I do my whole, for the editing stuff. So I know I'm going to skip through until I look for that. I didn't used to do that. It was a pain. It was pain to edit that. So, all right, this is number five. Uh, that, you know, right here, that's a great point. I will, I'll bring that up because um, Famore has got amazing right and left-handed scissors. And then when I get to the rotary cutter, um, they have an amazing right and left-handed rotary cutters as well for the, uh, for that one. So yeah, I'll talk about them. All right. That's, that's actually a really, really good point. All right, let's do this. What number is this one? This is the 739s. <sighs> Thank you for being here, Sharon. Before you head home from work, I appreciate you. I'll see you, I'll see you tomorrow on Twitch. Wait, let's make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, tw
four. Yeah, this is five. Okay. The fifth thing that I recommend is a good pair of scissors. Scissors are awesome. Now, back in the day, you'd have to go down to the local quilt store or fabric store and buy a $100 pair of dress-making shears. You do not need to do that anymore. Uh, I found this amazing company run by some amazing guys called Famore. Um, Famore Cutlery has some amazing scissors, and it's direct from them to you. They own the factory. So there's no middleman going through all those different things. Um, these scissors, I think these are like $30, and these are the best scissors I have ever had in my entire life. Uh, these are the seven, the seven thirty nines because I like these because they've got the, uh, the coating. So they're easy on my, my old hands. Yes. Remember I'm older than what I look. Um, and so I cut a lot. So my fingers don't get arthritic and don't have any issues. Um, so they're uh, really easy to use. They're super sharp and they're really nice. The great thing about the Fomore guys, if you see them at a convention that they're at, they'll sharpen your scissors for free. Uh, they also have a great line of left-handed scissors. So if you like left-handed things, Fomore is your company. Okay. Uh, it must be a way to do work things. Fantastic. Oh, thanks, Miss Elvin. You found the left-handed scissors? Sweet. Sweet. The 30 bucks. Nice. Oh, memory. Oh, good. Fantastic. All right. Seam ripper time! Seam ripper time! Okay. Ugh. Six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. The sixth thing you need in order to get started with quilting is a good seam ripper. Seriously, seam ripping, I don't care what you do, I don't care how long you have been sewing or quilting, you need a good seam ripper. Now, I love this one because of this little end right here. It's got like a little eraser end so that after you seam rip, you can clear away all the thread. No using tweezers to pick it all out. This takes it out. It is awesome. My favorite seam ripper in the entire world. I'll get links down below. And don't forget, I also have a video on how to use a seam ripper. You may be surprised. Okay. Hey, Engine! Tutorial content. Yes, and so, um, Engine, we are doing the things that you need to get started with quilting. So, so far we've done sewing machine, needles, thread, a quarter inch piecing foot with guide, scissors, seam ripper. We're still gonna do mat, pins or clips, rotary cutter, and the straight edge. So that's just standard getting ready for quilting. And then we'll, I'll do another video after this one. We'll record it tonight on, so you like quilting? What are some gadgets and gizmos that will make your life easier? So, right? Yeah, no, Fomori is amazing, right, Sierra? And if you, um, so if you go through my website, if you go, if you go to quiltoni.com and look at the affiliate link, um, if you go through that, affiliate link and then put in the code that I have there. I don't remember what the code is. Then you get 15% off at Fomore. They're inexpensive. They're awesome. I love them. They're, they're, they're awesome. Yeah, no, their tweezers are, mwah. oh, everything about that company. I just, I love the guys. I love the, ugh. seriously, Fomore, you will never, ever be disappointed in their, in their stuff. Next, yeah, let's do, yeah, let's do the, let's do this, and then I will, uh, I'll talk about the, ro the, um, the rotary cutter, uh, and then the mat, and then, and then the straight edge, and then that'll be it for the first one. <laughs> no, that would not be a faux pas saying that you're a human seam ripper. That's funny. Erica, look, Erica found the button. You guys are all finding the buttons. Erica, thank you so much for being a member for 11 months. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. 
No, no, it's brand new. So this is a brand new thing. They just launched this last week. It's a brand new thing to YouTube. Um, so you've got you, you've got the um, the tips. You've got the announcement for the subs. You can gift subs now, I believe. If it's not live, it is coming. Um, then not subs, gift membership. That's right. Different terminology for different platforms. You can gift memberships. So yes. Yeah, no, I, um, I, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for continuing to become the members of my YouTube channel. I love you. All right. Number six, uh, seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is number seven, seven, eight, nine. Hey, 10 things, the 10 things you need to get started for quilting. Nice guys. Easy number for the thumbnail. 10. That's what I'll do for my, for my thing. 10. Okay. Sorry. I, I'm, uh, I'm ahead of myself. I gotta, I gotta finish filming it first. All right. Wait, it's almost like it's giving another platform or you, you know that I make almost as much on YouTube now as I make on Twitch and I only stream live on YouTube two or three times a month. Right. All right. Yeah, no, I, I, I am happy with, with these changes, trust me. <sighs> number eight, nine, ten, no, no, number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Number seven. This is a seven. The seventh thing that you need to get started with quilting is pins or clips. Now, if you are a bag maker, a dressmaker, and you don't have a good set of pins, clips are fine to get started with. However, I have found it's a lot easier for quilting, especially with pixelating, with pixelated quilting, like the mermaid, um, that pins are my preferred method. Um, I use the, the clips more for binding and for other things, um, but it is your choice. I will have links to both the clips and the pins with an amazing holder down below in the comments so you can take a look at them yourself. Okay. Now, let's talk rotary cutters next. Let's do rotary cutters. Ready? This is eight. Yeah, this is eight. The eighth thing that you need to get started with quilting is a good rotary cutter. Rotary cutters are an amazing invention uh, that really help pick up the hobby of quilting. Um, before the 80s, you would have to use scissors to cut everything, and it took forever. Rotary cutting cuts the time to a fraction of what it would be with scissors. Um, now you don't have to have a rotary cutter. There's other things you can do with uh, fabric cutting machines. Um, you can use scissors, but if you are really interested in the hobby of quilting, I really suggest to get a good rotary cutter. Um, my preference is the Martelli cutter because it's ergonomic and it's good. So if with the Martelli cutter, and by the way, I've got a video all about how, how to use the Martelli cutter. It's down in the, uh, the comments below for the videos. But what you do for this one is you hold it right here and your finger goes like this. And this little depression right here is for your thumb. And then you just cut and you use it. Now, the nice thing about the Martelli cutter, because it is, it looks like this. It's a, it's a ergonomic one. It's not a straight one. They have right-handed and left-handed rotary cut rotary cutters. So the red is the right-handed, the blue is the left-handed. So if you have two quilters in the house and you you're right-handed and left-handed, you know who belong which one belongs to which person. So definitely need a rotary cutter. There we go. Uh, nice, Erin. I didn't know I didn't know that the yarn person was here in Ontario. That's awesome. Oops. It would help if I get, if I got that, if I got that. All right. The ninth thing.
thing that you need if you're interested in quilting is a cutting mat. Now, this is a fancy cutting mat. You don't need this fanciness to get started. This is a little bit more expensive than a regular cutting mat. You can really just go on down to the dollar store and get that small little tiny cutting mat if you want. Um, you can get just a cheap one online. I've, I've got links to this one and to a cheaper one down below. Um, if you're just getting started, you do not need to get an expensive one. However, you do need a cutting mat. You have to have one. Now, regular cutting mats are only a single layer, so you cannot get them hot. You can't leave them in the sun. They will warp forever, and they, they're done. They are done. Uh, I like this cutting mat. This is a cutting mat by Martelli, and I like this one because it is three layers. So it's not just double-sided. Sometimes you'll see the double-sided ones, but they're still one layer. It's just printed on both sides. This is a three layer cutting mat, which is why they've got the two different colors to show it's an actual three layer. The nice thing about this one, not only is it sturdy and strong and you can rotary cut right through this all day, every day, but if you leave this in the sun and it warps, it goes right back into place. Trust me, I travel with these. You see how nice and straight this is? Yeah. No, these are, these are great cutting mats, but they're more expensive. So you don't have to pick this up unless you really want a nice expensive cutting mat, but at least get some kind of cutting mat. Okay. All right. Last but not least. And then we're done with the first video. And we can get started and think about the uh, second video of, so you uh you like quilting what are some gadgets and gizmos that you should invest in all right so i gotta look around my room and see my gadgets and gizmos the tenth and last thing that you need uh if before you start quilting is a straight edge ruler so you can use a standard ruler, but I highly suggest grabbing a quilting ruler like this. Um, it's acrylic, they're nice, but they're see-through. So you can see what you're looking at. So if you're cutting about a three inch mark, well then you can see right here, you can put the fabric right there and cut three inches. It's really, really easy to use and really easy to see. So get a ruler, make sure that it is a decent ruler. You only need one to start out with. You don't have to go and in investing in all sorts of different kinds of rulers. The one is fine, um, but please, please get a, a quilting ruler. Okay, all right, let's do the ending and then I'll do all of my, uh, my crazy faces. And then we'll, I'll stop this recording and we'll start the next one. <sighs> And those are the 10 things that you need if you wanna start quilting. Uh, like I said, I've got all of the links down below for the things that I talked about. I've got all of the other video tutorials that I referred to down below. Uh, and if you have any questions, concerns, anything at all, put it in the comments, send me a message, let me know. Uh, and if there's any videos that I don't have already and you're looking for them, let me know, I'll make those as well. So thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you. Hopefully you learned about the things that you need to get started with quilting. Uh, I forgot to put it on mute. All right, let's do take two. And that's And those are the 10 things that you need if you want to get started with quilting. Um, like I said, I've got links for all the things I talked about down below, as well as links to all of the videos and tutorials that I referred to. Take a look at them. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to put a comment in, send me a message, 
I am here to answer them. And of course, if you have any ideas for upcoming tutorials I haven't done yet, let me know. I want, I wanna, I want your ideas. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully you'll learn how, you know, the things that you need in order to get started with quilting. Uh, don't forget to like this video, follow my YouTube, as well as Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, my Quite Nerdy Quilters Facebook group, uh, Pinterest I don't do anything with, TikTok, I do some things with every now and then when I remember, um, and don't forget about Twitch. So I stream live both on Twitch and YouTube. My schedule can be found on my social media on Mondays. So I'll see you whenever I'm live. There you go. All right, done. Oh, no, what? Oh, no, for that? Yeah, no, it's fine. All right, crazy pictures. All right, so 10, 10 things. Oh, you know what I forgot? No. Thank, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot to talk about this stuff. Not, Killy, if not yet, it's on my list. It's on my list of, um, of fabric storage, of um, actually of, of, of um, fabric organization. Um, different ways you can organize your fabrics. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, yes, but that is that is another thing. No, it's not 11 things. It's not 11 things. All right, so I'll cut this before that, that ending, just now. So you gather your top 10 things. So you gather those 10 things and you're ready to quilt, but you're like, wait, I need some fabric or I need something to get started. How, what's an easy thing to get started with once I've got these 10 things? Well, that's where these come in. So this is a, what's called a charm pack. Um, it is a pack of five and a half inch fabrics that are already cut for you into squares. And it's, they're already here. There's 42 of them. So you can just grab these, you can throw them into a quilt, you can make it and they're perfectly fine. Um, and you don't have to rotary cut just to throw it in the machine and get started. The other thing of course is back quarters. Back quarters are a great way to get a, a different uh, array of fabrics. You can practice your rotary cutting, you can practice your organization, um, and they're just easy little things that, that you can get going. And you can just cut them up and sew them together and create create something. It's fun, right? Just, just create. Okay, there we go. There we go. And we'll do this. And this. All right, now crazy, crazy faces. Okay, that should be good. All right, let me hit stop. Stop recording. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, back quarters are a gateway drug into quilting and sewing. All right, so uh, things that we need to tell them to get if they love Gidgets and Gasmos and they wanna, they wanna level up their quilting. Marking pencils. So I've got marking pencils. That's going to be an option. I've got my, um, um, my clover pointer, you know, corner poker turner holder thing. Cause it's got a rubber thing to hold stuff. Uh, at least don't let me forget my Aliso iron. I don't have one because I've got my broke and I got to get another one, but an Aliso iron to upgrade it. The stripology. Oh, let me grab the strip, the stripology here. The stripology 
Eh, the Stripology rulers. Um, so that's three. The quilter, the uh, gypsy quilter um, separator thing. The chain piece, yeah, chain piece separator thingy, thingy majiggy. The iron. What else do I have? What are other things that I have that makes your life easier? Good pair of tweezers. Do I have those or are they someplace else? Aha, they're right here. Good pair of tweezers. Oh, a, um, a mini. I don't have any templates. I, d I don't use templates. It all depends upon what you're making, Killia. It complete. well, I guess I have some templates, but it depends. This is like overall general things, right? So yes, templates, but that's only for like a certain project, I think. Because I, I really don't, I don't use a lot. But yeah, a good pair of tweezers. Uh, what size? Hey, Nick! What size rotary? You missed the first video on the things you need to get started for quilting. I'll post it though so you can see it. That'll, that'll be the video on Tuesday. What size rotary blade is this? I always forget. I don't remember the si what the sizes are. <sighs> oh, I'm the worst. Something to put pins in. Oh, you mean like a, um, the magnetic thing? No, no, no. This is from a different company that sent this to me. This is called the Shark Applicator. Because they, they gave this to me for free. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, it may be Rob's. I don't know. All I know is it's, is, is they, they gave that to me. But see, but I talked about the, um, the pin holder in the first video. So I don't know if I should, if I should talk about in the second video. Oh, that's Rob's. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, one quilt market one year. Oh, I guess he was at that booth and I guess, okay. Yeah. They, they gave this one to me. Mmm. That's right. No, no. No, it's Apple Cutter. So for applique. It's Apple Cutter. Not app not not Apple Cutter. Apple. A P P L I for applique. I actually don't remember where I got that one from. Oh. I just realized my table's falling over. Hold on. Let me fix the legs of my table. And then I will think about other things. So then the iron. Dang it, I hit the mic again. Sorry. I love you. I love you. Um. Sorry, I'm looking around at my stuff. Ooh, how about a thread hole? Should I talk about the thread holder so that you can use larger spools to save money on thread? I don't think we've got a mic check one here. Should I add this to the list of the um, of advanced things? The thread, the thread stand. All right. <sighs> Oh, I see why, because it shifted. Okay. All right. There we are. Okay. That's good now. It's not going to fall anymore. It's not going to fall anymore. So what do we think? Thread stand? Yes? No? Maybe so? What are other things that make my life easier? I don't use a lot of gidgets and gazmos. Ga g gidgets and gazmos. Oh my god. C 
seriously, Tony. Words. Say the words. Hmm. I know, right? I'm looking around at all my junk, too. If I can't think of anything else, then I'll, I'll do the, the thread, the thread stand. Thread stand. It's mostly the stripology rulers. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, what size is this, by the way? Yeah, see, it's, and I went over the, um, the clips and the, and the, um, the pins are for, um, sandwiching. So there's no reason to use them for standard stuff. What size, at, what, can someone let me know what size rotary cutter that is? So that I can, I don't look stupid whenever I, uh, I talk about it. See, but these are gadgets and gizmos to level, to, now that you know you're doing quilting, what are the things that you need to make your life even easier? Now that you can spend money, basically. You want to spend money on things? Spend money. No, really, Nick? Really? Really. I think that's it. So it's one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven. Seven things, yep. I can't think of anything else. Okay, the 14 millimeter. Okay, you know what? I can just look at Martelli. Because Martelli sells this too. Let's see. Rotary cutters. Yeah, 28 millimeter. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so it's a, it's the it's a 28 millimeter. Twenty eight or fourteen. Okay, I see what you're doing here, Nick. I see what you're doing. Oh, let me look in here. Let me look in this drawer. Okay, nope, that's my stuffer. I have all sorts of gadgets and gizmos in here. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't need, yeah, no, no, no. Yes, no. Okay, yeah, I got that, I got that. Okay. Okay, let me, I think, I think that's it. That's the seven things that you need to level up. Hmm, okay. Ooh, you know what I should, you know what I should do? Ooh. <sighs> no, no, I, I actually, it's not, it's not Rob's. It's actually, and now I'm remembering, it's not, it, this is not Rob's. This is another company that was, um, that was giving me a bunch of th free things to promote, and then they never got back to me. So it was, they gave me wool mats and a bunch of other things too. So, yeah. Okay. So it is the, um, a 14 or a 28 millimeter. Look at that. Isn't that cool? The bobbin holder. And it keeps it with the color. So if you're like me and you have all sorts of threads, all right, that's eight. Let's see if I can get two more. Oh yeah, here, here's one by itself. Isn't that cool though? It just looks like a, okay. And what other gadgets and gizmos do I use that are, You know what? Let's talk. Let's talk about fabric storage. Let's do it. <sighs> Boy. C. 
Sandwich bags? Really? Really? <sighs> That's more for EPP. So I talked about the glue pen for the EPP a lot. I mean, I could, but not for standard quilting, right? So I'll do that. So I'll do those. And this. <sighs> so I can see the... And then, so that'll be nine and that'll be ten. I mean, do you think I should talk about the glue pen? Do we, I guess... You know what? Maybe. Maybe. Where is mine? It's been so long since I EPP'd or FPP'd. I don't know where mine is. Is it here? Oh, hey, look. It's right here. Never mind. It's right there. All right, we'll talk glue pen. We'll talk about the glue pen with the sew line. As you can see, mine's almost all worn away because I use a lot. All right, so then that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, we got it. We got it. Yeah, no, get yourself some of those, um, get yourself some of these. They're super, super nice, and I love them. It's just, and they're really inexpensive, too. They're something like 25 cents or 50 cents per thing. You can get, like, a whole stack of them. All right, let's do this. I'm recording. Hi! I'm Tony, and today we're going to take a look at the things that will help level up your quilting to the next level. So I did the video all about the, uh, the 10 things that you need uh, if you want to get started with quilting. Well, let's say if you've decided that quilting is your thing and you love it, what are some of the things that I use that make my life so much easier and better and just take my quilting to that next level? Those are the things we're going to talk about. I'm going to take a look at with today. Uh, just like with the other videos, I'll put links for all the things I talk about in the comments down below, as well as any videos that I refer to. So let's get started. Okay. All right. What do we want to start with? Let's start with the marking pencils. Okay. The first thing we'll take a look at is your marking pencils and utensils. Uh, so you may not have used a lot of marking in the past, um, but you may need it for the future. So it's important to invest in some good marking utensils. Uh, in the past, sewers and dressmakers would always use uh, pens and, you know, you know water-soluble pens and things like that. I'm a little paranoid, honestly. There was an incident at a large quilt competition um, where, I'm not going to say the brand of it, where a lot of quilters used a certain disappearing ink pen um, that was gone, it wasn't showing up, but because of the humidity in California, all of a sudden all of those lines appeared again in all of these competition pieces. So because of that, I'm a little paranoid, so I don't use pens. I use pencils, though. So you can use any kind of water-soluble pencil. Um, you can use a name like Fonz and Porter pencil, or I like my Fonz and Porter mechanical pencil. It comes in regular chalk or water-soluble graphite. All right, so there's that one. The second tool that I love is my clover thingy. I don't remember what this is called. All I know is it's a cool thingy. It's got a poke in thing right there that you can like poke out corners and, and get in there and move things. And it's got this, this th tip here that it can't melt. And I can, I can use it to hold things down when I'm ironing in order to make sure that that's not there. 
It's great. I love this. I love this thingy from Clover and whatever it's called. I've got a link down below so you can you can get this thingy. You this tool's awesome. You know what I forgot about was my iron. All right, I'm not doing the um the thread stand. Thread stands, eh. I'll do the iron. All right, let's do the iron next. If you want to level up your ironing, I suggest grabbing an Oliso iron. They are awesome. They're ergonomic. They, they're, they're transformers. They move all around. They are just fantastic. And in most of my videos and my tutorials, you'll see me using the Oliso irons. Um, it's a little bit pricey, but they will save your wrist if you have to do tons of ironing. Um, and they will just be pretty fantastic. So I highly suggest picking one up. I've got the links down below to take a look at it. Okay. No, I don't want the actual name. It's funnier like that. All right. So that's one, two, three. Okay. This is number four. There's a four. The fourth thing is this cool little piece of plastic. It is inexpensive, but it is awesome. This piece of plastic is cool because you know what it does? This. I, if you are like me, whenever you really get into quilting, you have a lot of thread, a lot of it. And that keeps all of my bobbins together with all of my thread. And the nice thing about the Guterman ones is they've got the hole in there. So you can just pop that baby on right in there and it's good to go. Okay. I'm on five. Five. The fifth thing is something that I refer to a lot whenever I'm doing my full tutorials, um, whenever I chain piece, and that is the chain piece separator. These are so cool. I get a lot of people that are like, oh, I could just make it myself with this thing and this razor blade. These are not expensive at all, and it is awesome. The nice thing about the brand new one the Gypsy Quilter came out with is that it has screws on the back. So if you dull the razor blade on both sides, you can change the razor blade in here. So you have this piece and you can change it out. So I highly suggest picking one of these up. They're pretty awesome. Shh. I don't give me the name. I don't want it. I don't want it. Number six, number six. The sixth thing that you really need if you really want to do a lot of quilting is a good pair of tweezers. Well, let's be honest. If you've been quilting for any period of time, you know that there's some thread or some fabric or stuff in places that you need to get out. Or if you need to get into your sewing machine to get a broken needle or some fluff or something, you can't quite reach it. So a good pair of tweezers is a great investment. Um, these are my favorite tweezers. They are the 507s from Famore because they have this angled tip right here and they're super sharp and they can get into places that I need to get the stuff out of. So I've got the link for the Famori down below. I highly suggest getting a good pair of tweezers. All right, so this was, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that was six, right? Okay, seven. Seven. Now let's level up your stripping. I mean, because we all want to level up our stripping, right? The stripology rulers are a great way to speed your stripping up. Um, they have the extra large, which I've got around the corner. It's huge. It's great. You've got the square up 
So this is the Stripology squared ruler where you can cut all of your strips, but then you can also use it as a square up when you're squaring your blocks. And you've got the Stripology mini. So the, um, is this the square? It's called the Stripology squared mini. I love this thing. It's good for squaring little pieces, for cutting small pieces. Uh, these are both awesome. I hit the mic. These are both awesome ways to get your sewing. Wait, no. I forgot my train of thought. <laughs> These are both awesome. Wait, 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 what? Can I hit the microphone? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not recording. We recording that part. I'm sorry. These are awesome, awesome rulers to add to your arsenal. And I love them. Yeah, you know you want to level up your stripping. Come on, come on. Number eight. Number eight is a good glue pen. I love my glue pens, not just for English paper piecing and from foundation paper piecing, but for just the everyday, hey, I'm gonna do a curved seam here. Let me do a little bit of glue on there. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing. I love it. It is just, it's awesome. So I use the sew line with the blue so I know what is glued. And of course this stuff completely wears away. So there's no, there's no residue on your fingers. There's no ickiness from all that glue everywhere. Um, it's an awesome glue. I've got the link in down below my sew line glue pen. Okay. Yes, I know you have it, Erica, but I'm saying you level up your stripping. Uh, all right. Number nine. Number nine is multiple rotary cutters. Not just, so I have probably like six different rotary cutters. Um, I have a rotary cutter for um, my standard sewing somewhere. Oh, rotary cutter for standard sewing. Um, I've got a different rotary cutter for paper so I don't confuse the two. Um, you can get a 14 or a 28, which is the small little tiny rotary cutters to get into all the little tiny places. You can get the massive rotary cutters. If you get multiple rotary cutters, then no matter what your project is, you've got a tool for it and you can, you can work around all those different things. So get you some more rotary cutters. Alright. And last but not least, number 10 for the things to help you be efficient and level up your quilting, fabric storage. These are awesome. I love these things. So these are two different fabric storage solutions that I have linked down below for you to pick up, um, but they both do the same thing. So you wrap your fabric around them. So you've got this one, which is the, um, the fabric organizer. And then you've got this one, which is from paper pieces. So different sizes, different things. Basically you take your fabric, you stick it in here and you hold it and then you just wrap it around. And then once you've got everything wrapped around, you grab these really cool clips, these little metal clips, and it holds your fabric in place, just like that. So you've got it in place, so it's not going any, whoops, wrong way. It's not going anywhere. <coughs> and then it went somewhere. <laughs> And it's not going anywhere on your shelf. So as you put it in the shelf, it's not falling down. It's not, it's not causing a problem. 
Uh, so fabric organizers, I actually have these on a bookshelf, just like books. You can put them in a pullout drawer, like a file cabinet. Um, these fit nicely in file cabinets. There's all sorts of different things you can use these for. So fabric organization. All right, that's my 10. That's my second video. Let's do the end. I know, I know, Vicky, I know. All right. And those are the things that you need in order to become more efficient and level up your quilting to the next level. Now, you don't need them, but trust me, they're gonna make your life a lot easier. Of course, I've got links to all of those products down below, as well as other videos and tutorials I've got. Uh, and if you have any questions, concerns, comments, let me know. Put them in the comments. Shoot me a message. It doesn't, just let me know. Uh, if you have any ideas for additional content, let me know. All the things. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned at least one or two new things in this video you could pick up and, and run with and use. Um, don't forget to like this video, follow my YouTube, as well as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, I don't really do anything with, TikTok, I do sometimes, uh, my Quite Nerdy Quilts Facebook group, and Twitch. I stream live both on Twitch and here on YouTube, so if you get a chance, come and join me when I'm live streaming. I'd love to see you. And that's it. All right, so I need another... Scott. Oh, that's funny. Yes, yes, they went well. They went well. Okay, let me do this. And this. I think these are good. That should be good. All right, let me hit stop. Stop recording. I can flip it back over to here. Fantastic. I can put my sweatshirt back on and sit down. Ha ha! Thank you again, guys. Thank you for giving me the suggestions, for talking me through it. Okay, so. Oh yeah, the faces, the uh, the funny faces everywhere. So here's what I've got. Let me, I brought this up uh, for tutorials. So I did that one. Let's see. So other tutorials I've got on the docket. We actually have a whole spreadsheet of these. Um, I've got easing the seam allowance. Oh, I should probably do that one soon. I'm in the middle. Of, yeah, I should. I should. When I've got a good one that doesn't really line up a lot, I should. I should film that one. Um, squaring up quilts. There's so many quilting cottons. Which do I choose? Organizing your sewing room, storing, so that's organizing, organizing and sewing fabric. I'll also in that one, the 30 minute edit of only faces. I mean, if you think that I should just do a video of funny faces, I can do a video of funny faces. I didn't even think about that one. So this is my thread storage. So I'll talk about that in the video for the threat, for the, um, the, the, organization to the storage room stuff. Let me add that to the list. Uh, video of funny faces. If I still have it. If I still, I, I may delete a lot of my funny faces. So yeah, yeah. Kind of like bloopers. Yeah. The many, fa I can call it the many faces of Tony. Oh my God, Scott. Would you like me to do this now? I do probably have enough content for that. Do you want me to do this now or should I wait a few more months to get more content? Because I can film the opening and closing right now.
for some of the lives. Yes, but I have all, for every single time I ever do a tutorial video, I do that with. Yeah, if I, well, that's just for the live stuff. Like, I have it for all of them. I think I still have all of them. I just gotta find it all. It's a lot of editing. It's a lot of editing. <sighs> no. You cannot get funny faces with green screen behind me, sir. Sir. You know what? Next time I, I record this again, remind me, and I'll record a beginning and an ending, and I'll, I'll put it there for that. But I'm probably not going to have time to edit those right now. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. All right, but I've got it on the list. Video of funny faces. Um, making a four-color tumbling block for a Tetris block. Um, uh, hack of using a hair straightener for ironing strips. Uh, how to make a doggy hospital gown. So like a doggy, so if they have, um, um, if they have stitches or something and you don't want them to eat at the stitches, how to make a gown for that. I may do that in a few weeks whenever she's got her surgery. I may, I may do that tutorial. Uh, adding bling to your clothing. What to do when you can't iron your bling, but you want to use the templates. So the, um, the bling templates, how to make an easy scarf. Uh, difference between waste canvas and water soluble for cross stitching. So you want to stream creative? I don't know if I'm going to do that. Um, working with directional fabric. I think I've done that one though. Cause I did the, well, maybe not. Oh, I hate that. I hate directional fabric. How to use a couching foot, how to repair a quilt. Um, this is one that Sapphire, I'm sure, put on here. Sewing safety, a.k.a. why we close our rotary cutter every time we put it down. Uh, how to make a wax paper template. Let me message my husband that uh, I'm done with the actual video stuff so you can make noise. He's being, he's being super, super nice and super quiet up there. So I want to make sure he knows that he can make noise now. Um... I didn't say bow tie or fez. Oh, you mean for oh, you mean for the foundation paper piecing? Well, that's not the tutorials. That's something I'll be doing live stuff. What the sewing safety? I know, I know, I know. How to make a wax paper template? Curved piecing, threading a needle. So different ways you can thread needles that are easy. Um, thread conditioner, what it is, why you want to use it, some um, ways you want to use it, how to do a, th a, a t-shirt or sweatshirt pillow. So basically what I'll do is, is, um, how to sew with, with t-shirts. Um, so, and I'll turn it into a throw pillow. So I'll, I'll basically show how to use this spray stuff in order to do it. So <sighs> guys, how to make a flannel dog toy, um, Oh, how to use the fusible interfacing for pixel quilting. Um, the each, best stitches for each project. How to Joann's, which I can't do now because I'll do it eventually. Uh, how you troubleshoot nesting, which I can do whenever I actually have a nest. I can stop and then film it. Um, how to adjust tension, why you want, a machine, why you want to clean your machine and how to. Um, a thread guide for different kinds of thread. Different feet for your machine how to adjust sewing desks because it took, I am sad to say it took me a year and a half to realize that I could actually adjust this desk. Um, and how to choose a machine. So those are the ones I've got in there. Uh, if there's anything else you can think of, let me know. I'll add it to the list for ideas and things. So yeah, there's a bunch on there I really need to do. Just make, just getting time, right? Making time for it. So yeah. Well, if that, that's everything for tonight. That's it. Cause I don't want to get started with only 30 minutes left. I don't want to get started with another one. Um, so my plan, my, my goals, um, when I am in town on Thursdays, if I'm not doing the quilt along, I'm going to eat, I'm going to be doing tutorials. So Aaron, are you telling me you want me to do the fez or the bow tie for my next tutorial for this? You want you want to go back to foundation paper piecing and and do those is 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 what I'm hearing from you, 
Or is there anything else on that list that you guys really want me to record? Now, the gown for the dog I should do before her surgery. Her, her surgery is on December 10th. So, let's see. I'm looking through the calendar. I am, let's see, 11th and 18th are the, um, ooh, see, the second I'm not going to be here. Oh, maybe I will. No, I'm not going to be here the second. I'll be here the ninth. All right, so I probably can't do that live. Yeah, I still, yeah, I still have, I don't, they're not in the list because I know I have to do them, have to do them. Okay. Okay. So next week, the 11th and the 18th, we're going to do the, um, we're going to do the quilt along, the Halloween pixelated quilt along. I'm not going to, I could, no, I think I'm going to be driving to my parents' house on Thanksgiving day. Maybe I'll stream the 24th on YouTube. I may do that. I may stream the 24th and do the gown for her. Do the dog gown. Maybe. On how to, how to create a, uh, yeah. Yes, you are. You're wonderfully helpful at being unhelpful. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. Um, all right. I think I'm calling it a night. Thank you guys for joining me. I've got I've got content for two more uh, tutorials. So these will be up the next two weeks on YouTube. And then, of course, the week after will be the tutorial for the pixelated Halloween quilt along. And then the week after that will be, of course, the block for block number two for the retro gaming quilt along. Um, if you haven't taken a look at the one I posted this week for the retro gaming quilt along, the bubble store, please take a look at it. It's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, and thanks for joining me, guys. I I appreciate you being here. I will be on Twitch tomorrow at uh, 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock, where I'm going to finish off the Twitch Round Robin Corgi quilt and get started on the Mythical Creatures quilt for the border. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks!